Hello everyone and welcome back to Paso Gaming. Today we're going to go through how to rename ME interfaces uh, within your network. Um, and the same process applies for renaming just about anything else within Minecraft as well. Um, but it's particularly important for the AE2 stuff, uh, specifically the interfaces, so that you can identify which interface is connected where and where it is within your network. Uh, at the end of your build or when you're, as you build your things out, you'll probably end up with close to like two, three, five hundred. Uh, I've seen crazy amounts of ME interfaces. And if they're not labeled, it's very difficult to see which one you're referencing, specifically when you're looking at uh, your interface terminal, things like that. Um, and the terminal, as your network grows, makes your life easier because it allows you to access uh, these interfaces and put item patterns into them, just as you would uh, locally, but you can do it remotely from here. And if you don't have them labeled, then you don't know which is for the redstone furnace and which is for your pulverizer down the road. So what we want to do is we want to label each of these. So we're going to make eight here, and we're going to label them bank one. And we're going to do eight here and label them bank two. Uh, and then we'll just do maybe one or two of these just to get the idea. And you'll see how they show up much differently uh, in the end. So first thing you want to do is you want to make a uh, uh, Surgis Quartz cutting knife. Um, so it's a very simple uh, item to make. Uh, you need one iron ingot, two crystals, and two sticks. And that will give you your Surgis Quartz crystal. Uh, your Surgis Quartz cutting knife, sorry. <clears throat> After that, you want to put it in your bar just down at the bottom, and you just want to take it out, equip it, and right click. When you right click, it will bring up this little window, and within there, you want to actually place uh, an iron ingot. Uh, you can put a stack in if you want it, if you want to make a few of them. And then you want to type out what you want your label to be. So in this case, we're going to go basic crafting bank one. And we're going to take that one out. We'll do the same thing for the second one here bank two. And we'll do bank three, and we'll do bank four. Once you have those all done, you'll end up with your four. Uh, in this case, it's going to be four name presses, or however many you want to make. We're going to put the first one just in the top of our inscriber, and we're going to place some of our ME interfaces uh, just directly within the middle here. And we've power, given this power already just from the side. So we can see that it's starting to craft right away, and we'll just keep this going. Um, we can also see on the input side it says ME interface, on the output side it now says basic crafting bank one. So we got two of those made and we're going to make two of the other ones. So I just swapped it for the bank two ones. And we'll go ahead and we'll make, uh, we'll do the same thing with bank three and we'll leave bank four just for another time. Um, it does take a little bit of time to do these, um, but in the end, like I said, it's well worth it, this one extra step when you're placing your interfaces as it helps just really organize your network. And if you do it from the get-go, kind of like how we're doing it here, just getting our base going uh, in auto crafting, it makes things a lot easier in the long run. So now when you mouse out or you select them, you can see the bank number at the bottom does change as I go through them. So we've pretty much redone completely the name of the item. You can tell what the item is still by the look of it, um, and obviously the use hasn't changed either. So I'm just going to place these two uh, on this side. We're going to go to, these are bank three, so we'll put them over here, and bank two. So we can see from visually, they all look the same, including our blank ones that we had in there. Um, and if you mouse over them when they're down, they do look the same. Uh, but if I right click on them, the name at the top does represent what we changed it to. So now if we go back over to our interface, we can actually see that it's broken into the three areas that we listed, uh, which does make life a lot easier. So we have now our two interfaces that are attached to bank one, we have our two interfaces that are connected to bank two, two to three, and then we have our still our four original ones which are unlabeled. And so now our unlabeled ones we can actually remove. Uh, that's the right one, I think this one, this one, and I believe it was this one. So now we just have our basic three kind of on each of these. We'll go back here and we can see now they're all labeled. So this is a great way to help organize your uh, interfaces and makes uh, makes life very easy. Um, as I mentioned, you can pretty much relabel just about anything as well. So we can put in, um, let's say we want to make, uh, we're going to call this super weapon or super shovel. Maybe that's what we'll do. So we now have our label that's called stu super shovel. We're going to place our name tag 
or name press into our inscriber, and we're going to put our mandolin shovel previously in there, and it's going to be renamed to our super shovel. So now I have my super shovel. So as I said, it's a great way you can rename just about anything. This works with uh, machinery as well. So you can put in your pulverizer. It's going to rename it super shovel. Um, there we go. But it does make life uh, pretty easy when you want to go through specifically for the interfaces. That's kind of the best thing. The other one is kind of the vanity names for shovels and weapons or tools that you make uh, with, uh, let's say, tinkers and stuff like that. So hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you learned something. And let us know how we're doing. Don't forget to subscribe and like us if you like us. Talk to you soon. Bye.